ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing this evening? I am your planetary defense commander, Star Lord New Thor 7, and no matter what, no matter how deadly or damaging the situation, the night shift is always a little more laid back. And so, right now, I am figuring out my own personal evacuation plans because this storm should be landing anywhere from 20 to 24 hours from now. And at this point, I think it is so large, it is now up to category two intensity and still has at least 20 hours over very hot Gulf waters with no wind shear and no dry air to inhibit it. That um, I think even if it landed in New Orleans, that the effects are going to be felt down into Galveston, Texas City, Houston, and possibly even farther beyond that. And so, no matter what, it is your responsibility to figure out what you, your family, your friends, or your pets want to do in this situation. Okay, great. And this was the loop I saw about an hour ago <clears throat> that made me make up my mind that like, yeah, I think I would like to leave and because it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, this is about an hour ago and we can watch the storm grow and rapidly move forward. Now, notice how it's kind of bowling balling along this way and so from its trajectory uh, we've been told that the storm will keep moving southwest or northwest and then at some point it'll do like a hard right it'll do a hard turn north like 90 degree or 180 degree whatever the degree is it'll go from like this to that and so i have a bad habit of trusting the term but it, right now it seems like even if this giant major storm and remember it's going to continue to intensify as i've said uh for like two months that whatever storm comes around the 24th i would guess it has a chance to be a category 2020 storm and this is definitely a category 2020 storm to me so i think it could definitely get to a category four or a category five and that is what i've been saying i've also been saying if it is a category three storm i would not be there and so now that i'm here i'm doing what i can to make sure i get out of town and if that did not seal the deal for me, the classic skull shape we see here, this is brought to us by Alex Arts, Alex Levers, that we saw in Maria, which killed a lot of people, and we saw in Michael, which killed people. This is like the classic skull shape. If you have been following, if you're a weather weenie, you have been following it for a while, I like caramba. This is like Hades coming to take lives and souls. Uh, a symbolic representation in my mind. So... Just as our world is upside down, the skull is upside down here. And Cisclonis Trapicolis flipped it upside down. Though technically, I'd take the nose, like that's the mouth right there. And then there, yeah, I guess there's a nose. So, uh, you know, do, if you're in Houston or any of the areas, or even Louisiana or Beaumont, you know, if you had had thoughts about evacuating, you know, I'm just telling you my own personal process. But I do not have a car. Or at least not here long story um and so i will depend on other people to help me evacuate and hopefully that'll happen but god has always been very good to me um peter mullinax laura has now reached beast mode achievement unlocked and so look at the size of this storm y'all and so this has rain inside of it and then a ton of wind and so look at the side like if you were to take this storm and overlay it, it would stretch from pretty much the middle half of Louisiana down into almost Corpus Christi. So no matter what, this is going to be a major storm. And so one thing that I have noted is that the basic rules of like National Hurricane Service and old school meteorology is that you never share a model outside of three to five days. And so there's almost never any modeling for category four or category five hurricanes because from three to five days out nobody is sure that it's going to be a category four or category five and so none of the models we have show what would happen if we got hit here here or here by category five and the category three modeling had some of the storm surge from 13 feet down to three feet lasting up to 47 miles and so even if this thing goes into this line right here i believe it's wave effects are going to reach hundreds of miles this way and hundreds of miles this way and then hundreds of miles north and another thing is the models had this storm 
still being a Category 1 strength hurricane when it hit Oklahoma and Arkansas. So if it does hit it as Category 4 or a Category 5, then how strong will it be as it travels over land? Like, this thing is just a Category 2020 monster, in my opinion. And so, you know, do what you can to prepare for it in your own way. And I know coastal people are like, hey, I've been through a lot of hurricanes. I can handle it. But with a wind field like this, it's already got 105 mile per hour wind speed. Uh, it would knock out power for hundreds of miles. And so it would just be kind of a bad scene, man. But I'm just kind of giving my late night shift off the cuff. And I, too, am feeling some anxiety. So I'm like right here. So, okay. So things are kind of sort of super jacked up. For example, this is the GFS latest model run for Laura. And so it has it pretty much almost making land at around almost midnight on Wednesday, which would be, I don't know, 21 hours away, 20 hours away. And uh, its wind speeds, this, would, this is wind gusts at 97 miles an hour. Like if you take away... This has these are this is sustained wind speeds. The GFS is guessing 21 hours from now, without anything inhibiting it, this will have 75 mile per hour wind speeds. As Eric Lopez points out, Laura is officially a Category Two hurricane with max winds sustained at 105 miles per hour. In my opinion, she says the Cat Four at landfall is not out of the question. And as Thor News' opinion, Cat 4 and Cat 5 have always been on the table. And so this is how like off the models are, where it is predicting, the GFS is predicting 20 hours from now that it would be at 75 miles per hour. It is already 35 miles over that, or 30. So the latest Euro run has it making landfall about 24 hours from now. Wind gusts of up to 178 miles an hour and sustain, sustained wind speeds of over 111 miles. And so it has still got 24 hours to get to this point over super hot waters, no wind shear, uh, no dry air to inhibit it. And so it is already in rapid intensification. So the question is, how much more can it rapidly intensify in 24 hours? And technically, it has been intensifying about 2.5 millibars every hour. As super cool Billy Forney points out, minimum central pressure wind speeds, an hour, 1 p.m., 990, or 4 p.m., 990, 7 p.m., 983, 10 p.m., 978, 1 a.m., 978. Laura went from 90 to 105 in a two-hour bulletin. Uh... I may have said that funny, but yeah, basically it went from, it, it was dropping massively. I guess what I'm trying to say is that, and so how much more will it intensify over 24 hours? Probably quite a bit. And so at this point, I'm no longer looking to the models to see what I trust or believe because I've already made up my mind to evacuate if I can. And so, you know, this would make landfall in about 24 hours. And notice how there's that, it just, it's going west and then it starts to go north. I don't trust that term. And if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I don't trust hurricane turns, even when they do happen. But what I'm saying is that this storm, I think going into this cove, and especially this is shipping channel, that that is still going to have some, even if it does this, it's going to still have some major effects on Houston and the Houston area, Beaumont, Cleveland. And if it does shift west, I'm just saying I don't plan on taking chances unless I have to. Alex Lubbers. Hurricane Laura is rapidly intensifying with very strong, very massive convective bursts flaring in the eye wall. The eye is trying to clear, and the storm is taking on the classic buzzsaw appearance. Oh, and I'd also like to say, and I have worked so hard, and I've done everything I can to warn you guys about the August 24th danger damage storm that was coming. So, if I do evacuate, and even if I did take three days off, <clears throat> hopefully you all would understand I'm not saying I'm taking three days off. I'm saying it's a possibility, and at this point, I don't know what's going to happen with me personally. Okay, but one thing I don't like about this, every time I look at this infrared radar, it always kind of shows it going north, which I think is weird. 
And the number one <clears throat> tool I like to use, the precipitable water chart for how much water is willing to participate in a storm, it isn't working. So the number one tool I like to use for hurricanes and hurricane landfall and determining whether they're going west, north, it isn't working. So all the signs point for me personally being like, hey man, you know, you, you're lucky enough that you could leave and all you really need is a laptop, electricity, and a place to stay and you'll be fine. So I'm saying make up your own mind in your own way if you are, are, are involved in this. You know, this is all modeled for category three. Um, and that's Galveston right there. And so it's even pre predicting storm surge, San Luis, there's Houston. So they're even predicting five, six to nine here, nine to 13 throughout here, seven to 11 here. So that is a ton of storm surge. And this was based on just a category three model. And so if you go up to category five or four, then all these numbers get bigger and these colors go back deeper. And so this is almost, so the storm surge was estimated to reach up to anywhere from 20 to 30 and over here, 47 miles. So it's quite an interesting situation we are dealing with. And I think the effects of this giant storm are going to be felt, like I said, almost across two major states. And, you know, I really like covering a storm from long range, whether it be two months out or the 14 to five day range, because at about five to three days, everybody else gets in. So there's not as much pressure on me. And so, and then after landfall is not my favorite time to cover a storm. Cranky weather guy is my unofficial partner in weather crime prevention. He covers the storm till it's totally done. And like I said, this storm has the ability to stay very strong until it hooks up with two other storms up in the Northeast. So this thing will be a beast and a monster until it leaves. You can almost even see the skull position on the water vapor. And so there's a lot of heavy shit going on, man. And so at some point, I'm just letting you guys know now, I will probably try to evacuate if I can't, although that is dependent on other people in a car. And so if you don't hear from me for a couple hours, you know, do the best you can with all the information. The weather Twitter team is great. Cranky's great. Well, that's what I'm saying is this storm, which will probably continue to get bigger for 24 more hours. Even if it lands right there, it is going to affect. You could just place that whole storm over it. And so since I'm right here and I, my job depends on electricity and a laptop, I don't want to uh, be in the storm. And so I would either go to Fort Worth at the ranch or I, I might go to Austin for like two or three days. It's, Austin's a fun place to hang out. Um, and I'm sure we'll come to you guys with live streams or whatever. But just letting you know, giving you a full heads up. I love you, Asteroid Fight Club. You guys have been great. This is a very dangerous, very deadly situation. No bones about it. This is going to be one of the biggest major hurricane landfalls we've ever seen. And it's definitely seeming to land anywhere from here. To down there like it's not that compared to the size of this where exactly it landfalls and like like i said even if if, if it were to continue to go south or go into houston uh, there are two million people there i don't that i don't think are everyone thought it was just going through here and that so it's not going to affect houston very much and i think that technically for houston you know right now all lights are green there's no traffic, and I don't think a lot of people are planning on evacuating, and that may change, but I, I still think you'll have not a lot of traffic up until anywhere from 8 a.m. to midnight, even if it shows a direct hit on Houston. I don't think like a lot of people are going to get caught off guard. I'm not saying there's going to be direct hit. I'm just saying that there are still avenues to evacuate if people want to. But evacuating is your own choice. All right. I don't know why we always get stuck in the 99. The information I want to show you is important. Major storm. Were those purple bars friend or foe? Who knows? And so if you are anywhere from 50 miles inland of the radius of where this is going to landfall, you know, my, I, I would, I'm, I'm 45 miles in and I'm going to try to get this higher, safer, funner ground if I can. So it would be my recommendation but it is up to you and I don't know your circumstances.
uh, here, Bill Karen's is saying pit in stomach when this image just came in. I don't see how Laura isn't a category Hurricane 4 later today. And then after Hurricane 4 is category 5. And I think it's going to be a category 2020 storm. Like I said, look at the size of this thing. It, it stretches when it makes landfall. It will stretch from the size of it is, is big from New Orleans to Galveston. And it will continue west. So. You know, do what you well, do what's best for what you think is best for you and, and your family. Um, but and by my projections, we've got about 20, 20 to twenty four more hours of landfall. And so there is time to do whatever you think is best. So everybody, stay cool. You will be in my prayers. Put me in your prayers, and uh, I will chip in. See if I can get out of Dodge, man. That's what that's my plan. All right. God bless everyone. Talk to y'all soon.